My hot take is that I don't believe in work-life balance. I believe in work-life trade-offs because the price of anything is the amount of life that you're willing to exchange for it and action only reveals priorities. So everybody has the same amount of time and whether, oh no, but I'm a parent and you're not a parent. All right. The, the, your action to being a parent is still reflecting your priorities. Oh, but I'm an athlete. You're not an athlete. Well, your action of being an athlete is still reflecting your priorities. So it's a trade-off for something else. It is the price you're willing to pay for what you want. It's not always going to be fun, but it's just a trade-off. It's not a balance. Mm -hmm. But I do think it does connect to what we were talking about prior of the better you can rest, the better you can recover, the more energized you are, the better you will work and the better your output will be. But I don't think it's a balance. What do you think? I feel like I've come to give it a lot more as a balance. So I'm going to disagree with your hot take. Let's hear it. <laughs> but mostly just because I think. Okay, let me go through. I wish I could get everything you just said tattooed on my forearm. <laughs> well, okay. So but let's think about it this way. For the goals that only you know and that only you have leading up for the next two weeks, would you say your approach to those goals is balanced? Exactly. Like that's that's exactly the point because you want an unbalanced result. So the way to get there is through an unbalanced lifestyle. It's unbalanced in the only way it can be, which is... Like we've talked about, like our balance looks a lot, my balance looks a lot different from your balance looks a lot different from someone else's balance, but it was balanced in the way that in the only way that I really think I can be balanced in this time, which may not be much, but it's still a balance. Uh, I think if, cause if I was only ever just training, I would go insane. And this is something that Mo knows very well. And, uh, for me, why I'm so happy that I have so much else in my life that's also not throwing. Like, I'm so happy that I have such an amazing job. I'm happy I'm able to have really great friends and go travel and see them and do a bunch of cool stuff and that I love to read. Um, just because if I was only ever just throwing, I I would lose it. I would It would get like so into my head and I would never be able to let it go. And it would like haunt me. And so for me, I need other things in my life. And that is what I call the balance, the healthy distractions, the good distractions as Mesmo calls them. So to me, it is a balance, but I also think that's because for me, it has to be because if I don't think of it that way, I guess trade-off is a good way to think of it too. I guess. Um, <laughs> but for me, like if I don't have that, then I know I would not be able to throw. I just wouldn't, it would not work. I would get so wrapped up in every little thing every single day, which is why I actually like, yes, being a student athlete is hard, but I think it's also one of the best things that you could ever do, especially like for an athletic career, because it's giving you something else that's not just your sport. And it's giving you time away from it, like every single day as well. Other things to focus on, other things to achieve, something that's not so rooted in just being an athlete, which is important also like I, because I think so many athletes, like their identity is solely rooted in being an athlete. And you know, I think that's, that is my response to your trade-off, but I do, I do understand where you're coming from and I do like, and can appreciate why you would think of it, like why you think of it as being a trade-off. And also the balance comes in many different ways, shapes, forms, and sizes, right? Like one of my favorite things from the episode I recorded with Isabel Ivy a while ago at this point was something she mentioned that was a piece of advice from her mother, which was that you have all these different things in your life, but your goal is to be juggling them as if it were like a couple tennis balls. And the goal is mm -hmm. to like not drop the balls. So maybe at some point, oh, you have this one in your hand and you're throwing this other one, but the goal is to keep on juggling it over and over and over again. So I like that a lot because it's not a perfectly balanced act, but you just keep it going in that cycle. And currently the way I'm thinking about it is the mind, body, spirit type of connection, not in this like uh, super 
uh, hippie way or something, but just in like, I'm not uh, judgmental. I think it's just a little bit, but not of that. <laughs> I think it's a, a good connection though, to have like mind, body, spirit. When you really think about it, like mind, it's your work that you're talking about. Body, it's your athletics. Spirit is anything else that fills your cup. And I think. I love the filling your cup reference. Yeah, I think it's good. And I, I think it's a, a great metaphor for this type of balance, right? Like you can't pour from an empty cup. Exactly. You can't give what you don't have. Yeah. I think that's a a good way to think about balance, maybe having three separate cups Mm -hmm. and just pouring water into each and every (laughs) single one of them at a time. Changing it up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the only way I could accept the idea of balance. And to your point, that would make everybody's balance look different of like, oh, this cup is fuller than... My cup of spirit is a bit fuller than yours, but yours in athletics is fuller than mine or whatever the case may be, like regardless of, of what point it is. But does that make more sense with balance? Like or can it. we can we agree on I that? I like that. I like that. 